Hi there, this is Gleb Bakhmatov. My application implements drag and drop. I can take an item and I can drag it so to change its order and it works beautifful. How do I test it from a Cypress test? Well, testing with drag and drop really depends on implementation. So I have to look at what my script does. Let's find all the places where it says drag. So an attribute on a card is draggable, okay. I can see that the cards React to drag start and drag end event and the implement and class change. And then I can see the drag over is actually related not to the card, individual card right here, but on a parent to do's element. Okay, that's, we have to be careful. And the target has to be a card. So we are looking for an event on a parent, but the target is individual card. What else? And I think this is it. So let's start dragging. I guess I want to drag maybe this card number two and move it up top. So that's something that we can do. So I'll say take this second card and I guess I'll trigger an event. Right? So I want to trigger drag start. Okay. Now, did it do anything? Let's look at the elements. Notice it now has a class dragging because that's what this event listener does. Okay, let's confirm it. So we'll take again this element and we'll say should have class dragging. Okay, and I believe because we're working with the same element, it's not re rendered, it just adds a class, we can attach it right to the trigger. Perfect. Now we need to actually drop it into the first element card so that they switch places. The drag event, right, drag over, actually is registered on the to-do, right, which is this parent element with all items. So we need to send this event, right, event with a target of a card, all right? So which means it's kind of tricky. Here's how I would do it. I will take the first card out of all cards and I'll dispatch the drag over. And I'm adding parameter bubbles true. So we're gonna deliver the event to this card. It will bubble over because that card doesn't register you know, event handler. It will get to this handler and that it will be processed and the target will be set to that card because that's where we're actually dispatching event to. And the best thing for you to see it is to actually print it. So I'll say E, E, target. Let's save this. Okay, perfect. So we're getting the right thing. And notice the order now switched and the card we're dragging is actually shown in a semi-transparent thing because it still has this drag class. Remember, we had this drag and somewhere, right? So we have to tell a particular card, hey, we stop dragging it. So this is what we can do again by dispatching an event. And at this point, it doesn't really matter if it bubbles or not because the card where we're dispatching it to, which is the second one, the two that we just finished dragging, right, it will handle the event. Perfect. So notice that the order has switched again. Nice. Remember how we confirm that the item was had class dragging, well, we can confirm that it no longer has class dragging. And notice we're already grabbing the first because they switched order. So this is the item we're confirming no longer has class dragging. And another thing we can do, our application saves all to-dos and their state completed or not in local storage. So after we finish dragging, we can get the local storage, invoke get item to-dos, which is where our items are stored, that's where we set at the beginning. Parse it, and it should dip equal, well, to something. It should dip equal to this array only in reverse. So we can say for clarity to do is one, followed by to do zero. So opposite order of initial. So now we drag the item by correctly dispatching events to the correct targets. And then we confirm that the classes are set and the order is updated correctly.